Hi, welcome to YTV and this week's segment of Everybody Has a Story. We're very excited to be joined today by a very <laughs> funny guest who is putting his face in the camera right now. So He's a best-selling author and the host oh, yes. of Comedy Set Tools, The Colbert Report. Please welcome Stephen Colbert. Mr. Colbert, thanks for joining us. Usually I get applause when people say my name. Okay, hi. hi. Lovely to meet you. Don't pity me. Okay, I hello. Will. First off, congrats on the Emmy win. Thank you, you very much. You've been John Stewart. here for almost 20 seconds. It took you a while to thank me for that. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm slow. Okay. Wait, right? is, is this the end of John Stewart? Is no, he, he won. Over? He's yeah. my executive producer. So he won on my show as well. He's unkillable. He's the vampire of basic cable. Now, you, you, you just spoke at the law school and uh, you were spoke out at of, the law school. Yes, and spoke you, you, at them. you were out of character. Uh, when, when was you I? At was the law I? School. You seem to know I a lot about me were. and my character, Cody. <laughs> that is your name. Uh, it's short for something. Uh, no. Coda Dial. Yeah, Cody. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I guess my question is: When you get invitations uh, to speak, are you ever like disappointed if they ask you know you to be your character? If they I don't know who they invite. Character? Really, I'm not sure who they invite, and and so I bring both guys. Okay. I, honest to God. I, the first time I ever was invited to speak was uh, for Knox College in, in Illinois. Knox College, the, uh, uh, for their commencement. And I, just, I, I, led, I led with, I don't know who you invited, whether you, if, you, if you know that I'm not that guy or whether you know that I'm me. Yeah. Well, are, are there certain times, though, that you, you agree with your character? But yes. You, you don't want to let the audience know that? Yes, yes. There are times when... We'll be working on it, and one of my writers or one of my producers will say, "Oh, you mean this one?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I mean this one," you know. So the writers know, but the audience. Oh, they always know, yeah, because they, you know, they, they, because when what we do the, in the show is that we do a deconstruction of the news, like John does. I don't know if you saw what I was just saying before, but John Stewart does a deconstruction of the news. He basically takes the news story and he lays it out like parts on a lawn. and goes, "Look, this is what they're actually saying," and then makes jokes on those individual parts. Here I am talking about. How John Stewart does his job, as if I really know how he does his job, but that's how I perceive it. That's, you know. But um, I'm sure you could explain it better. But uh, what we do is we do a partial deconstruction, and then I reconstruct it in another way. And when we do that partial deconstruction, you actually have to know how you feel about every part of it before you put it back together, because you have to know what shape you want your monster to be in when you're done. Now you, you just yeah that ab sense. absolutely. Yeah. Well, you you just spoke about campaign finance reform. Um, and you did I a spoke lot. about the jokes I did. The, the jokes you did. On well, campaign, that, that's, this on is what campaign gonna... law, not reform. I don't really. I'm not here to reform anything. Sure, but uh, you you did this for about 20 months at the Super PAC. But you, you say you're not here to reform anything. That you're not in a business of remedy. Uh, but do you have a positive reaction? Is it is it good for you when you see people mobilize because of what you've taught them about campaign finance law? What you've illuminated? I don't know. I don't know if that. I don't. I've never had that experience of people mobilizing. I've never, never had an honest. I don't think I've had, had an honest mob at my back. And by honest, I mean that if we, we, every mob at my back knows the game I'm playing, and they're in it for the joy of the game. Now it can be about something that matters to them, like, like elections or like campaign finance, but. They all know that we're there to play a game about what's happening. We're not there to do what's happening. I don't want to be in politics. I want to talk about politics. I want to make jokes about politics. Now, John Stewart, who also makes jokes about politics, he took three months off this summer to go uh, direct a movie. So he says, I haven't seen it. <laughs> there? There's been no evidence so far. I knew he, I know, you know, he grew a beard. Yeah. I know other, no other evidence so far that yeah. he did anything other than just not do his show. Are there projects outside of comedy that you want to do like do that? Something, do you have a script or something like that? Because I'm desperate, desperate okay. to get out of comedy. I'll give you one. Something now serious. I want to be the romantic lead in something. We just no, I love what I do. I love what I do. I don't want to, I, I want to do comedy. I Long ago, I realized this is what I'm good at, I hope. And, and, and I'll, I'll do it until I'm not having fun anymore, or rather the audience isn't having any fun at my fun. I came after you wanted to be Hamlet, right? Yo, I did, yeah. When I was younger, I was really, really involved with my own misery and emotions, and I was not very good at doing that professionally. But I got much better when I started making jokes professionally. Now, we, we want to end with this very quick speed round of, of quick uh, one-answer questions. So, uh, number one, uh, oh. book you're currently reading. Uh, 10th of December by George Saunders. Favorite recurring guest on the show? Probably Neil deGrasse Tyson. 
More likely title for Bill O'Reilly's next book, Killing, Mc Killing McKinley or Almost Killing Reagan? Mm, mm. Strangling Garfield. Well, you said sodomizing Coolidge on your show earlier, right? I, I, don't, I have no recollection of that, okay. Senator. <laughs> Four, you're a Lord of the Rings fan, so uh, yes. uh, let's test it. On, on what date was the ring destroyed? Oh, gosh. Oh, year one of the Fourth Age. Oh, boy. I thought it was March 25th. I bet it was. So my was. Year one of the fourth age is actually the crowning of Aragorn. Okay. Year one of the fourth age. Okay. You know uh, or, 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 or maybe it's year one is the destruction of the ring. I can't remember. March what? March 25th. Oh, that's great. Is, I didn't know that. my very brief Google research. I like it. That's good. That's an excellent. Last one. Uh, I, Colbert 2016, president of South Carolina. Are you going to do it again? I, I didn't know I was going to do it the first two times, so I don't know. I can't answer that. I have to talk to my family and obviously... Pray with my minister and, and see where the Lord guides me. Stephen Colbert, thank thanks you. for joining us. Pleasure. Nice and thank you. you for joining us. We'll see you next time on YTV, and everybody has a story.